Hi everyone, Glorious Egg Roll here, and first I'm gonna clear my screen. <laughs> okay, so um, this video, we have got a new game to run in wine to show you. Um, this comes as a request from a friend of mine who was in my Twitch chat the other day and asked about Path of Exile on Linux in wine, and it runs awesome. But obviously you need some configuration to get there, so that's what we're gonna do. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're going to do is set up our prefix. Now, uh, Path of Exile actually runs a 64-bit version perfectly well. So, for once, you don't have to set up a 32-bit prefix, thank God. So, we'll do wine prefix equals, we'll do forward slash dot, what do we want to call it? Path64, sure, why not? Um, okay, so just to explain this, the tilde and the forward slash tell it to put it in your home directory. Um, the tilde, what it does is it skips all of the other directories leading up to your home directory, and then the slash added to the tilde puts it in your home directory. The period makes it the folder invisible. If you don't want the folder to be invisible, don't put the period. And there you go. That's going to be our prefix, and we'll do wine cfg just to get this started. Okay, it'll ask you to install mono. Go ahead and hit install. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I have it turned down kind of low, but <laughs> got this Ariana Grande mix going in the background. Okay, so that's installed. Make sure this is set to Windows 7 on applications. On libraries, we're going to add OpenAL. I think it's OpenAL32 that we have to add. So we'll add that. Apply. Oh, whoops, staging. Make sure on staging you have the CSMT enabled. Hit apply. Boom, done with wine CFG. Next thing we have to do is we'll do wine uh, regedit. Okay, now with regedit, what we're gonna have to do is we need to add our, um, we need to add our video memory size. So in order to do that, I have this little fancy command here and I'll clear up the screen first and show you. I opened up another terminal and this command will be, I usually post my guides in, in Reddit for the corresponding game. So I will link the Reddit post for anybody that needs it. But this command, this long and obnoxious command, if I hit it, it says, bam, VRAM 6144. I've got a GTX uh, 980 Ti. That's how much RAM I have on the card. So we'll go back to our registry editor. We'll go to current user, software, wine, right click on wine, and hit new key. Direct 3D, okay, and then once we're in here, make sure this is selected, then in here, hit new string, type in video memory size, okay, hit enter on it, and then paste that in for the value. For 6144, that's our memory size, our video memory size. Excuse me. Okay, so regedit is done. We can close that out. Next thing is we gotta do our wine tricks. And the ones we're gonna need are glsl equals disabled. We probably could have done that in regedit as well, but it's easier just to type the command out. Um, DirectX 9. It is very important that you note that I'm installing DirectX 9 and not D3DX9. There are There is a difference between the two. Um, the D3DX9 are the, um, the wine overrides, whereas DirectX 9 are the official files. Okay, so the next one you're gonna need is rich20 and then rich 30 usp 10 msls 31 let those install you can actually add dash q as well if you wanted to go into quiet mode but i don't really care except next next finish Okay, now, if you don't have the game installed, what you would then do is uh, obviously go to the website, download the installer, and then you would CD into the directory that you downloaded it. For example, downloads would be, for me, I'll open another terminal for this. Put a new tab, zoom in so people can see. Made it one more. 
Okay, so we do CD slash, and then for me, my directory is actually in my home directory and it's downloads. Okay, so I would do that and then I would run, that's not it. I would want to run my prefix again. It's easier if I just copy this. Paste, and then I would do wine and then name of POE installer.exe, right? And that would start the installer and get it launched and running and get the game initially installed. Now, once you do that, I'm not gonna run obviously because A, I haven't downloaded it, the installer and B, I already have the game installed. So let me close out of that. Go back to our original terminal here. We'll clear the screen. And obviously I've just done a fresh install and I'll do um, CD slash, in order to get to the Path of Exile folder, you do this, I would do you know, CD slash, a space slash path to POE install, whatever your directory is that you installed it to. And that'll put you in here and then you're gonna want to ls dash la and that'll show you everything that's in the folder. Um, normally when you launch the game, you're going to want to launch it with client.exe because there's a, a um, launch option that you want. But before you do that, you're gonna want to, because we're running a 64-bit version, you need to run Path of Exile 64.exe just to update the game. So what we're gonna do is again, with our wine prefix, wine path of exile 64.exe. launches the game. Obviously, I've, my game's already up to date, but if yours isn't, then it'll update the game before launching it. We're gonna then exit the game. You can hit Control C to get your cursor or whatever back. And then we're gonna do, again, same prefix, wine client.exe, and then we're gonna do dash dash no async. And what that does, is it launches the game with um, as a okay so as a patch 2.3 in Path of Exile they introduced this um, what's called background loading and what it does is it dynamically loads textures as you need them while you're playing. Well, generally this is good because it doesn't it, it loads things faster. It doesn't work as well in Linux because it also runs asynchronously, which if you've ever tried to run wine other wine games with multi-threaded more often than not you're gonna have problems he's looking at you warframe <laughs> so anyway you're gonna to want to disable that and what that'll do is it'll cause it to load all of the textures and stuff that you might need for that level or wherever you teleported before you actually load into the game so that you don't need to load them as you're playing so we'll launch it with load as uh, no async obviously loading screens are gonna take a lot longer to load but it's still it's not a stupidly long amount. It just takes a little bit longer. But it's worth it in the end because your gameplay is a hell of a lot smoother. So we'll wait for this to load. Mana mana bo bo mana mana. There we go. Okay, so options. First thing you want to do on your graphics. Uh, the shadow quality, you can set it to high or low, it doesn't matter. Um, I generally run them off just because I'm usually in like a whole slew of crap that I'm fighting and I don't like the shadows to get in the way of gameplay at all. But you can set them to low if you want. Anti-aliasing, this you can actually set to off. Um, your graphics card is basically, basically going to take over for anti-aliasing and uh, V-Sync. And honestly, you can turn off anisotropic filtering as well, but I usually leave it on. It doesn't make too much of a difference. Um, but yeah, you can turn anti-aliasing off. And sorry if I don't pronounce that right. That's just how I've been saying it. Texture filtering is fine. DirectX version, you can leave at auto. Um, Multi-threading, you can actually leave on. That's it works fine in-game, but... I mean, you can disable it if you want. There's not really that big of a difference there. And as far as that goes, that's fine. We'll hit apply. 
sometimes the game kind of throws a fit when you apply settings, sometimes it doesn't, in which case you may have to restart the game. This one worked fine, looks like. Okay, save. Let's go ahead and put our password in. Apparently I typed the password in wrong. There we go. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. And the game runs great now. I mean, like in in between 1.7 to 1.9 version, it was it ran okay, but you had missing textures here and there, and it was a you know it, to me, if it's missing like a lot of textures and it doesn't run fluidly, then it stutters a lot, then it's not worth playing. But it runs great now, so we'll we'll jump in there in a minute as soon as this loads. And again, like I said, you have no no async running, so it's going to take longer to load, but the gameplay will be much smoother. What troubles you bring? All right, let's go down here. Let's see if we can go kill some stuff. So far, so good. And like I said, I've also I've played this with friends. I've tested in high level areas. Um, that the big kicker is you you really want no async on. Without no async, some of the higher level areas with a lot of monsters can really be daunting. But as I said, like I did, I've already done a full playthrough of the game at least once. And part of the reason I discovered the no async was near the end when you have to, um, when you're in like the belly of the beast or whatever it is, there's a ton of mobs there and there's a, um, there's a part where you have to go into this portal, which kind of looks like a hell portal, like a portal to hell from Diablo, but once you go in there, there's just a shit ton of stuff and it, when I didn't have async on, or when I had, um, when I wasn't using the no async, no async option, it lagged to shit. Like, every single time without fail that I went in that area, it liked to shit. So then, that's when I did my research and found that, hey, you should try using this. And I turned it on. Sure enough, it worked without a problem. But as you can see, I mean, the game's running perfectly fine now. And if you run, if, like I said, if you want it to run even smoother, you can turn shadows off. I've got shadows on low, but there's barely anything noticeable on it that... Very fine, very playable. No missing textures or graphical bugs or anything like that. Really, guys? There we go. Look at all these upgrades. Yay! Now here's another test. You remember, you remember if, if anybody tried playing this in Wine back in the day, every time that a bunch of mobs would spawn at the same time, you get a huge freeze. Look at that. No freeze whatsoever. Although I did just die. <laughs> I went to hit my jump and I accidentally hit my, uh, actually, accidentally hit my uh, space bar. But as you can tell, all those mobs just spawn with no freeze at all, so... Anyway, there you go. That's what I got. Bath of Exile runs. It runs great. All you got to deal with is a little bit of time for the loading screens. That's it. Other than that, you know, and anybody that's played games for a really long time is used to loading screens. So that's it. Enjoy. Have fun. Hope this gets the game running for you. And good luck.